seems like this is the popular one today. We can make a difference and run a business. It doesn't have to be not-for-profit profit anymore. Mr. Brett? Hi, I'm Tyler Melnick, and I'm the founder of No Fixed Address. I help close the food gap, uh, reducing our waste, while also recognizing that people are, are suffering in our cities. And uh, I do it through a pay it forward model. So paying it forward is $5 to cover the cost of a soup. So two soups. Two soups, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Regular price items can be added on just a little bit more, and that generates something I call a huggable. These are the new tokens that we have today, the ones with the QR codes. <laughs> Let's drop it in the bowl, and uh, as soon as the soup's ready, we'll make sure to give someone a meal. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And the Huggable is destined to be given away to whoever is facing food insecurity at that moment. Is it free? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So all I need you to do is pass me the token that's in the bowl right there. That represents the soup that somebody's paid for. Thank sure. you. Yeah. I'm not doing something new. I suppose what I what I did is I came up with this radical concept to bring it to the Olympic Plaza and make it more visible. You too, take care. I came out from Burlington, Ontario to go to Cascade School of Business. And when I did, I created a big gap between my family and I. And it's during that time that my dad became more and more disenfranchised since I wasn't checking in or as close with him. He'd always struggled with his own issues and he became further and further disconnected. And it was one of my last visits home that a friend of mine uh, came and told me that where he was sleeping and he showed me. It was a bench down at the lake, uh, right on the shores of Lake Ontario. This is creating a legacy for my dad and this is keeping his memory alive. There's some real pioneers in our city. These super entrepreneurs have a social heart and they've really motivated me to see that if you create a social purpose business, it's not an afterthought to do the giving. It's a part of the business is to provide that, that goodwill and so many people are doing it. We make some good soup, tender, loving care. Good ingredients and a little bit of good seasonings in there and let it cook, let it flavor through. Tyler actually reached out to me through the Leftovers Foundation. Um, he needed somebody that would provide him with some product, a good, hearty, healthy looking bowl of soup that people can enjoy and they feel like they've had a meal after they've had a bowl of soup. He's kind of at my discretion as to what he's getting because it depends on what I have to make. He sees his weeks ahead of time, so he makes it when he has it on hand. That brings the food cost down. And so when I pay him, I'm saving a little bit there, which then I can pass on to the customers through the Huggables. We're taking what people are not buying in the grocery stores. There's still nothing wrong with it. You might have to take a knife, cut off a, a bruise, we took 480 pounds of produce in October from a produce store, and out of that, we lost 15% of that 480 pounds actually ended up in a compost. The balance of that was all turned into meals for people. He's more and more getting noticed, and it just means that we have to make more soup for him. I have been approached by several other people who heard the stories and they've said to me, when can we get this? One of the groups that came to me is actually from Hamilton. They said, look, we're fundraisers. We don't run businesses, but we can get the people in place and we really want to make this happen in Hamilton. And to me, that was the full circle. It's like what I started here could actually possibly go back to the city where I last saw my dad. I'm just, I'm just unbelievable. It just, I was cheerful. Your soup and spoons are here, napkins, salt and pepper, and I'll get you your bread. 